Jeremiah is continuing his teaching on vision. Um, today he is going to share God's word. If you have your Bible, go ahead and go with us to Proverbs 4. Tonight's teaching is guard your heart. We will invite we invite you to join us every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook and Instagram at Your Vine Connection. Like Your Vine Connection uh, ministry on, on Facebook and click the bell on Facebook as well to get alerts when we go live with our teachings. You can also follow Pastor Trey at Your Vine Connection on Instagram. So get ready to join us live on YouTube soon as well. Pastor Trey's Practical, insightful teachings are broadcasted on WMGO Radio 1370 on, re on Thursdays at 2 p.m. in the Jackson metropolitan area. Like and share. We want your uh, participation and we value it as well. Type your questions, comments, prayer requests in the comments section and like and share the video. Give a thumbs up, wow, and hearts. Thank you for your support to spread positive, practical teaching that empowers us to live our best life. We're going to pray, then read along with Pastor Trey in Proverbs 4, 20 through 27. All right. Let's pray. Okay. Father God, we thank you for this day. Hey, James. We Praise thank God. you for this time that we can um, pursue you and pursue your best for our lives. Father, right now we want to um, rid all distractions of the week. Father God, we want to focus only on you and on your teaching. Father, help us to um, have an open heart. May our hearts receive all of that you have for it and help us to um, use these pract this practical teaching in our everyday lives. Father God, I pray that you speak through my dad and that um, his the words that come out of his mouth may be an utterance of who you are and your holy will for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we're glad that y'all joining us today. You know, it's uh, here in Mississippi. We just got a good shower. It's kind of humid outside. The shower cooled it down a little bit. But other than that, we are having a pretty good week. We've been busy at work and just doing those things, the day-to-day -day things that we have to do just to keep our lives together and keep things flowing and keeping the bills paid. If you know what I mean, say amen. Amen. <laughs> Well, today we're going to go into God's word and we're going to, it's a good word. You know, God's word is a good word and I am so glad that he has allowed me the ability to be able to share it with you because it blesses me. And like I told you many times before that when I get into God's word, man, sometimes I come out there with whips on me that big because it whoops me real good. But it, but it also changes my life and it gives me an understanding of how God want us to live and how we should follow his principles. But tonight we're going to go to the life game plan. That's a game plan for God's life. You know, maybe for our life that God has for us. We can't live any kind of way. You know, sometimes we think we can do anything and just get God's best. But we can't live any kind of way. I've been ministering to a young couple, you know, and they are, they are living in some situations, you know, and, and, um, some things just going to have to change because you cannot live any kind of way, you know. And I, I'm reminded when Jesus found the count the young lady, they brought her to him in the very act of adultery. And they was wanting Jesus to condemn her and to throw stone at her, at her like they did. But Jesus, Jesus did not do that. What Christ did was he gave her grace and he gave her mercy. But just because you receive grace and mercy does not mean that you stay in the same situation. Grace is to give you the strength to walk out, and mercy is to restore you. And so what did Jesus tell her? She, he, asked her he asked her a question. He said, let me ask you a question. Why are your accusers? She said, there are none, Lord. He said, neither do I. But look what he told her. Go and sin no more. Don't do the same thing. Don't keep doing the same thing. God has a requirement. And he changes us, he charges us, and he challenges us to live our best life. And our best life is to line up with his word. And so this now we're going into what Solomon, he's talking to his sons, and he's, 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 he, we're in Proverbs chapter 4. And we're going to start in verse 20. And he's telling them some things, and he's giving them a heads up. And look what he's telling them. He said, listen carefully, my child, to everything I teach you. Hey, Ramsey, glad you joined us. And pay attention to all 
that I have to say. Fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your heart or into your spirit. Then as you unwrap my words, they will impart true life and radiant help into the very core of your being. And I'm reading out the Passion trans Translation. But another thing he said in verse 23, he said, look, so above all, guard the affection of your heart, for they affect all that you are. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being, for from there flows the well springs of life. Avoid dishonest speech and pretentious words. Be free from using perverse words, no matter what. Now, he's telling his kids here, he's giving them, he's giving all of us insight of how we are supposed to live. And so what he's telling his son, he said, pay close attention to what I have to say. And I challenge you to pay close attention to God's word. What does it mean to pay close attention? That means to act or the state of applying the mind to something. You applying your attention, you applying your mind to something. In other words, he's catching you by the head and he's telling, look, listen to what I'm telling you. This thing works. If you do what I tell you, you're going to win. Just listen to what I tell you. I remember sometimes we can get in some close games and we get frustrated out on the field when I played high school ball and played college ball. And the coaching was no different. The coach would always tell her, if y'all do what I tell you, if you do the assignment that I have given you, guess what you would do? You will win. Hey, Steve, glad you joined us, man. And so this is what God is telling us. Solomon is telling his son, if you do what I tell you to do, you're going to win. All of our frustration, all of the things we have to deal with, a lot of time it comes because we want to do our own thing, our own way. And guess what the results of it is? Sleepless nights, heartache, oppression, depression, suppression. We deal with all of those things because we want to do our own thing. But look what Solomon is telling his son here. He said, pay a close attention to what I teach you and to what I tell you. Look what else he tells him. He said, fill your thoughts with my words. What do you fill your thoughts with? Are you feeding your thoughts? Because anything you feed, guess what? Grows big. So are you feeding your thoughts lies? Are you feeding your thoughts fear? Are you feeding your thoughts that you're, you're losing? Whatever you feed, you can expect it to grow. And so Solomon is telling his son, he looks on, this is the game plan. Pay attention to what I say. Don't feed this mess in your thoughts. You feed your thoughts with the deep things that I'm telling you in my word. Verse 21 says, fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate into your heart. You keep telling yourself the thing that God's telling you until they penetrate your heart. If you don't believe them, keep saying them until you do. If they don't sound good, keep saying them until they do. You keep telling yourself what God is telling you. If God say that you are a winner and a devil in hell to tell you that you're not, he said, keep telling yourself these words that I'm telling you. So I challenge you to get negativity out of your mind, out of your life, out of your heart, out of your vocabulary. And most certainly get it out of your hearing. Because we gravitate to those things that we hear. So he said, keep my words in plain view. Why did he say keep it in plain view? He said, put it in your heart. This is the easiest place you can access it when you need to. When I put it in your heart. So he said, verse 22. He said, until they penetrate deep into your spirit. And he said in verse 22. Then as you wrap my, unwrap my word. See, that's, that's the process that he's trying to get us to understand. First of all, you got to hear. Then you got to pay attention to it. And to pay, to pay attention to it is to look at every aspect of it. 
Because as you start looking at it, trying to figure it out, you are paying attention to it, you are growing, and you're becoming more what? Concerted with God's word. And look what else it says. Then, after you do all those things, he said, unwrap it. What does it mean? Have you ever unwrapped God's word to find out what it's saying to you? To get down to the detail? See, sometimes we hear it, but we don't unwrap it. We hear it, but we don't pay attention to it. You have to pay attention so that you can do what? Unwrap God's word. And then you will impart it. So first of all, guess what? You got to hear it. Secondly, you got to pay attention to it. Third, you got to unwrap it. And after you do that, guess what he said? Then you will impart true life. So then it becomes an impartation. It becomes who you are. God started imparting things to you. He started putting things into you. He started building you. He started bringing you to certain places. He started developing you. So he's saying, look, impart it unto you. And then guess what it does when it's important? It brings life and radiant health into the core of your being. I want you to ask yourself this question because this is something that we have to deal with. At the core of your being, who are you? I'm talking about you done took off all the, the, the weed. You done pulled off all the fake eyelashes. You done pulled off the cap. You done wiped off the makeup. When you look in the mirror, who are you? I'm not talking about who you are to me. Who are you to you? See, that's what our struggle is. Because for so long, we show people what we want them to see. And we never get to know who we are and what we have to deal with. Do you realize so many people go through life and never know who they are? They don't never know, they never know who their true self is. Who are you? And so Solomon is telling his son that you need to put these words into the very core of who you are, into your nucleus, into who you really are. God's word does not work on what you want to be. God's work, words work from who you really are. If you apply those words to who you are, I don't care where you are, it'll work for you. It will work for you. And so anyway, he goes on, he says here, because of those things, look what he says in verse 23. So above all, all the things we just got through talking to, he tells them to do what? Guard your heart. Watch your heart. What does it mean when it says God? God means one is assigned to protect or to oversee another. Simon is telling his son is, you need to protect your heart. Have you or are you protecting your heart? Are you allowing stuff to enter into your being that don't need to be there? Hey, we're we glad you joined us. Are you protecting your heart? Look what he says. Above all, in the Passion Translation, it says, Guard the affection of your heart. Hey, Tate, glad to see you, man. He said, above all, guard your heart. First of all, he tell us to hide the word in our heart. That's going to feed our heart. And then guess what else he said? Now you need to guard it. Why do you need to guard it? Look what it says. For they affect all that you are. Jay, what's your translation say? That's uh, Proverbs 4, verse 23. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Everything you do comes from the heart. I've learned that. When people are struggling with issues in their lives, it comes from the heart. I don't care who you are or what you are or where you are. That's where it comes from, the heart. Everything you do comes from your 
So go give me a charger because this phone like it's getting down weak. Everything you do, I got one by my, by, my, my nightstand. Everything you do comes from the heart. You got to guard it. So guess what that means? You got to pay attention. And in other words, this is on the offense. These are the things that are going to keep you going forward. Putting the word into your heart. Doing those things that are necessary. Living a good life. I mean, these are the things that are going to bless you. But also, you, there are some things you have to do on the defense. And these things on the defense is you got to guard your heart. Because that's where the issues of life come from. I don't care where you are, what you're dealing with. That's where the, the issues come from. I want you to think back about some things that you missed in your life. I want you to ask yourself the question. Ask yourself the question. You think back about some things that you're dealing with in your life, whether it was past relationship, whether it's, you know, growing up with parents or parents not there, or people who, you know, I talked to a young lady not too long ago. She, you know, she lost her, her, her mother. I mean, her heart is very, very, you know, she, she become hard-hearted because of their hurts. And I told her, sweetheart, I, I, I understand where you are, but you got to guard your heart. You got to purge those things out of your heart because guess what? Your issues in life are going to come from those things that you keep it in your heart. Everything, the heart contribute to everything we do. Like the heart and your physical body pump blood to every part of your body. Your spiritual heart pump life to every part of your being. And if you are dealing with some life issues, the first place you need to do is put a stethoscope on your spiritual heart and see do you have blood flow. Because if you don't, there's some blockage there somewhere. And you need to find out what it is so that you can open that thing up and get it resolved. And so that's what Solomon is telling his son. So he said, above all, guard your heart of the, uh, the affection of the heart, for they affect all that you are. You got to guard it. Because people can say something, they can do something, and make you feel some kind of way. I've been there. I'm not going to act like I don't understand what you're talking about. There are some things that are going on in our country right now. We're seeing all of this stuff transpire. We see it, I mean, and it makes you feel some kind of way. But you got to guard your heart. So that you don't become bitter, but you become better. You have to guard your heart. And so look what else he says here. Verse 24 says, Avoid this honest speech and pretentious word. He's talking about, he said, stop lying and gossiping. It's what the word is saying. We got to watch what we let out of our mouths. These things affect us as people. It affect our character. It affect how people perceive us. It affect, it affect your walk. It affect your ministry. It affects everything. So what Solomon is saying in this word here is you have to guard your heart so that bitterness don't come out of your mouth because guess what? From the what? Abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. The mouth is only going to say what's in the heart. So if you hear people that will say anything, guess what? They got anything in their heart. If you hear people saying hateful and hurtful things, they're full of hurt and hatefulness. The mouth would not lie on the heart. I'm going to repeat that. Your mouth will not lie on your heart. And your heart will not tell your mouth to lie. So if we listen to you long enough, we should be able to tell exactly what's in your heart. And so he's telling his son, he said, look, above all these things, guard your heart, pay attention to what you say, avoid lying, being deceptive, deceiving people, and saying all type of foolishness. What do yours say? Foolish words. That's verse 24. Put away perversity from your mouth, keep corrupt, talk far from your lips. You see, these things 
can be a strategy or a struggle. It all depends on how you see it. A wise man, the word says what? Well, he's careful with his word. He don't say anything. That's when you know you're dealing with wisdom. But if you got somebody who got diarrhea at the mouth, you're dealing with a fool. Because the Bible said a fool would tell his whole heart. He just, he just put it out there. Hey, Manessa, right. God, should, yeah, you're right, sweetie. Got it. You have to have the wisdom of learning to keep this thing closed. Because it can be a strategy or it can be a struggle. It all depends. It all depends. So let's go a little bit further. So he says, not only is he telling us to guard our words, verse 25 says, he also telling us to guard our eyes. Set your gaze on the path before you. This scripture said, with fixed purpose, looking straight ahead, that ignore life's distraction. In other words, have a goal. What's your goal? What's your end goal? What's your plan? Where are you trying to get to? What do you want to have? Hey, Shirley, glad you're joining us. What's your goal? We want to make certain that you have a goal. What's your end goal? What do you want to do with your life? Who do you want to become? You got to have a goal. You got to be able to take your eyes and keep it straight. Because if you don't have a goal, guess what? Everything looks good. Have you seen people who can never get off, get, I mean, get the plane off the ground? They're involved in this and that and this and that and this and that and this and that. They're going to do a whole lot of different things and I'm not doing nothing. Because they're not keeping their eyes straight. You have to have a plan and you have to have a goal. And so it says here, set your gaze on the path before you. The path that God had set before you. Keep your eyes on that. Keep following that path. So keep your eyes planted on that. That way you can minimize your distractions. We are distracted when we do not have a place to set our gaze. But once we can have a plan, this is where I'm trying to get to it. This is why I need to be in light. If you ain't going and if you can't see what I see, we cannot be involved. We cannot be intimate. You got to have a goal. So first he said, watch your words. The next thing he said, watch where you're looking. Like I said, strategy or struggle. And then guess what else the next one he said? Verse 26. Watch where you're going. Where are you going? You're going in the direction that you're seeing. If you can't see nothing, guess what? You ain't going nowhere. You see. So what am I saying? Watch your words. Watch what you're looking at your sight. And now he's saying, watch where you're going. Look what he said. Stick to the path of truth. And the road will be safe and smooth before you. Think about it. My wife and I, we went hiking not too long ago. It was a small hike, y'all. And we was in Birmingham. And man, we had to walk down. They had this spring. And they wanted us, you know, they said it's a spring down there. So, man, you know, I feel like I'm in pretty decent shape to ride my bike and do all this stuff here. And so anyway, we, we walked down this ravine, man. We went all the way down to see the spring. And man, we had to walk across roots and I mean, all kind of stuff, man. So I said, man, I said, this is tough terrain. But we got down there to the spring. And on the way back, guess what? They had another path. The path that we went down was tough terrain. Roots and all that. If I did not keep my eyes on the goal, and if I did not watch where my feet was placed, I would have stumbled and fell. As bad as I wanted to get there, my feet went where my eyes took it. 
Now on the way back, we found a better trail and it was smoother. And I had I didn't I didn't stand as much chance to stumble. Sometime in life, you do not have the wherewith of your terrain. The thing that life has dealt you. But you do have something to control that. And that is your eyes paying attention, knowing where you're going. Pursue that play, that path, that path to truth. Okay, how tough the terrain is, you still be able to navigate it. So this is what Solomon is telling his sons. Stick to the path of truth. The road will be safe and it will be smooth. How do you know you're right on, on the right road? If you're a believer, check your spirit. Find that peace in your spirit. If your spirit is in turmoil, that's evident that you're not on the right path. If there are some things you need to let go in your life, let it go. Ain't nothing worth, worse in life than to be tormented. When God has something for you and he's trying to pursue you and pour you into the realm of possibilities, the things that he has for you, and you fighting them every tooth and nail because you want to have what somebody else has, or you know a better way that hadn't worked for you yet, but you're still kicking and squalling, asking God to let you have your way, and he's trying to tell you these years that you have here on earth, they ain't but few. Don't waste your time pursuing stuff that ain't working for you. And so he says here, verse 27, don't allow yourself to be sidetracked for even a moment. How long is too long to be sidetracked? A moment. A moment. A moment is too long. He said, don't allow yourself to be sidetracked, not even a moment. Or take the detour, detour that leads you to darkness. There's a lot of paths out there. Paths. Not all of them take you to greatness. Some of them take you to a dark place. So I challenge you today. Let's come up with a life game plan. We want you to win. God desires you to win. Everything he created in you was created to win. He didn't put nothing into you to make you lose. He created you to be a Amen, Vanessa. You're right. A moment to be sidetracked is too much. You stay on that path. You keep your focus. You learn to keep your mouth shut. If you're not speaking life, do not speak death. Put your eyes, keep your gaze on what Christ has for you. He has seen better for you than you can even think of. Possibility that you can't even con 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 you can't even conjure up the possibility that he has for you. So don't take any detours. You can be your own problem and don't even know. That's right. Perfect. That's right, Tay. You are, you are head on. You can be your own problem and don't even know it. So do you think um, guarding your heart is like a daily choice? Or is it like how often should you evaluate whether or not you are guarding your heart? I think it should not just be daily. I think it should be a lifestyle of God in your heart. Once you learn the lifestyle of checking your spirit, that's how come he told them. He said, take it and put it. What, what verse is that? He said, verse 21. Don't let it out of your sight. Yeah. Fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your spirit. Then as you unwrap my words, they will impart life to you. That need to be a part of who you are. You understand? That should be so deep and rooted in your psyche. And to everything you do, guess what? Guess what Jesus said? I do nothing aside from what the Father tells me. That's what he said. And I'm telling you, I'm not telling you to be over-religious and over-ceremonial. What I'm telling you, check your spirit. 
Check God's word. So that means you know your triggers. You got to know your triggers. That's right. You have to know your triggers. You got to know those things that keep triggering, that keep, 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 keep stumbling you up. All your weaknesses. All your weaknesses. You got to know your weaknesses. Those things that you keep failing and falling on, you have to know those things. That's very important. Check this, checking your spirit every day. Every day you have to check the spirit. And there comes a time when you have to cut some things out of your life. There are some things in your life that you might be enjoying. But there come a time when God tell you, look, you don't need this. Get rid of it. And you have to be obedient. Because like, like Tanara said, sometimes you can be in your own way. And you can be hurting your own self. And you're blaming everybody else but the one who, who's causing the problem. My mama did it. My daddy did it. Grandmama did it. Auntie did it. The ex-wife did it. And there's a common denominator in everybody who did, and guess what that is? You are that common denominator. And it can be fixed. Yeah. And I think also it can be kind of difficult to guard your heart. Like, I'm just trying to think of what keeps us from guarding our hearts. Mm -hmm. And I think um, one of those things could be, like, we're not real with ourselves. We think that our hearts are guarded from our perspective. Mm -hmm. But when you get into the Word, you see, okay, I am struggling with this. I'm struggling with that. This is a weakness. So I guess that's why um, the first thing that we went over in verse 20, it says, pay attention to what I say, not what, what you feel. Mm -hmm. Because your feelings can be deceitful. You can Very be feeling so. one way, but when you read the word and you pay attention to what God is saying, it gives you a check and, check and balance to um, evaluate whether or not you are guarding your heart. Do you think we need a check and balance in our life? Yes. <laughs> Most definitely, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we all need a check and balance. Yeah. Always. That's what the word is there for. Does it come in and say, take, your, take his word and set it on your uh, nightstand? He said, put it in your heart. Where, it, where it, in your heart is more what? Accessible. You can get to it. Then you have no problem saying, well, look, this is what God, this is what God's word said. So I don't care what you tell me whether it's right or wrong. God's word said it's wrong. You know, I, I saw some, some good friends of mine, you know, some good people. And, you know, they, they, you know, people throw stuff out on Facebook. And they were asking some questions, you know. Man, is, uh, is, is, is certain things still sin? But they've always been sin, so why they're not sin now? God's God said, I changed not. See, sometimes we want to change, we want to change the situation to fit our culture. And yeah, our culture and the things we want to do. God don't work like that. You see, we won't see that the, God's standards is here. Our standard is, 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 is let's see, can I get it? We can get it. It's here. Instead of us coming up to God's standard, guess what we want to do? Ooh, bring God's standard down to where we are. Mm -hmm. It don't work like that. So we have to make certain that we are intentional. Anything else you want to add? No, I, I think the more, <clears throat> I don't know, I guess sometimes um, people or I, I felt at certain times that spiritual people or people who have strong relationships with God mm -hmm. got that way because they're special or because it's something about them that has caused them to have this close relationship with God. And of course, people are special, but what I'm realizing more and more is the intentionality and the discipline that goes into having a strong relationship with God. That it's not that one person is more important or more or is more special than the next person, but there are some people who are willing to make that sacrifice to guard mm -hmm. their hearts. There are people who are willing to to play out the discipline that it takes to guard their hearts. Therefore, they have the fruit in their lives to show it. And so this word is just kind of, whew, it's eating me up because I'm like, oh, Lord, I got some work to do. Well, but, it eats all of us up. But it's encouraging, too, because mm -hmm. I know that um, God gives us instructions for a reason. Mm -hmm. And he gives it, gives it to us because he loves us and he cares about us. And there's something special and valuable on the end of our obedience. So even though I'm like over here like struggling, like, oh, gosh, <laughs> um, I am encouraged because I do know that. Um, God has our best interest at heart. He does have our best best interest. 
You know, and sometimes we don't, we look at people's, other people walk, and we feel like you said that there's something that was you, so unique about them. A lot of times, other people walk, like myself, I use myself as an example. When I started living for God, I had messed up so bad that I had nowhere else to go but to him. Mm-hmm. There was nothing else that could have fixed what I was dealing with but God. See, some people walk to God out of obedience. I went to God out of desperation because mm-hmm. I had nowhere else to go. It don't make any difference if they got a party in New Orleans, mm-hmm. whether you go by train, whether you go by the, what's called that big bus used to have, the boogie bus, or where you drive a car. It doesn't make any difference as long as you show up at the party. Mm-hmm. And that's the same thing as about having a relationship with God. It doesn't make any difference what vehicle got you there. The important thing is showing up and being there. That's the most important thing. I want to thank you all for joining us. And we just enjoyed sitting down and just talking and just opening up our homes and our hearts with you. We are just elated that you would join us. And we ask that you come and join us again next week. As we continue in God's word, and we're going to deal with some other things, man. I tell you what, this discussion is, is really growing. <clears throat> and we are excited about what God is doing, and we're excited about what he's doing in your life. Because as you start coming and start seeing things, I'm seeing growth in you. I'm seeing the thing that you're saying. What Tay said, what God has for it is for you, no matter how you fight it, whatever he put you through, he show you through it. Amen. That's correct. So I am, tell you right on, bud, I want us to grow, be free of foolishness and and, and selfishness so that we can just do some great things for God's kingdom. That's why we exist. It's not about us. It's about you. Until next time, this is Pastor Trey Roberts with your Vine Connection out of Clinton, Mississippi. God bless you. We'll see you then.